This is Carrie. It's October 4th, and we're going to give you a brief demonstration of the training that he's had. Um, he's done really well, and we're going to go through four main areas of the training program. There's manners, obedience commands, house training, and leash training. And the house training and the leash training um, by far take up the bulk of the time that goes into their training, but most of what we're going to show you here today is going to be um, his obedience commands and his manners. Now some of his manners are placed on command, but many of them are not. A lot of them are just behaviors that he's been taught. Um, like you'll notice when he approaches me, he automatically sits for a greeting. Um, and basically I just kind of want this to be his default behavior. When he doesn't know what else to do, or when he comes up to me and makes eye contact, I want him to sit. And that does a couple things for us. Um, for one thing, it gets him kind of planted, planted in one place so he's not moving all around, um, and it's hard for him to pay attention when he's moving all around. And also, when his hind end goes down, his eyes come up and he looks to you, um, and he's ready to take directions from you. And also, especially with these large breed dogs when they're around children and stuff, they don't necessarily need to jump to lick kids' faces and stuff. So when they're sitting, it helps them to control themselves and and have a really proper manners for greeting. So He's also been taught not to jump up, so we expect him to stay on all fours when he's around us. So you'll notice that throughout the demonstration. Um, something for you to keep in mind is remember to give him attention when he's staying down around you, when he's on all fours around you, and minding his manners and doing what he's supposed to do. Uh, make sure you give him attention for that, rather than ignoring him until he has to jump up to get the attention. But he's done well with his jumping um, and staying down on the ground. He's done really well with that. Another one of his manners is having a gentle mouth. He's expected to be very, very gentle with his teeth and to be very mindful of where the food ends and your fingers begin. And if he ever gets kind of competitive or really trying to get at your fingers, just say gently and expect him to use his lips and his, and his tongue to get whatever's out of your hand rather than his teeth. So he's been responsive to gently, and, and Goldens are naturally very soft mouth anyway. And so he's done really well with that. Come. As far as his mealtime manners, don't ever just let him, don't ever just put the food down for him. Expect him to sit and stay and wait for a verbal release before you feed him. Stay. checking in so often, you know, having them do commands to get their food, to come in and out of doors, and all these kinds of things. Um, but the way dogs are designed is they have a pack mentality, and so they really like knowing who's in charge, and they like um, taking commands from somebody. You know, a pack leader controls the other pack members' resources. They control their movements and behavior, and so that actually gives him a lot of sense of security, and it really contributes to your bond to him. Um, there's five things that most people naturally give their dogs several times a day throughout the course of the day. Um, there's an acronym that I use to help me remember that. All good dogs fetch toys. And that stands for A-G-D-F-T. Attention, gates and doorways, food and toys. And like I said, these are things um, that you just naturally through the flow of the day, you give your dog several times a day. So make sure you ask for obedience and don't ever give these things away for free. Ask for a sit stay. You know, ask for manners. Um, ask for him to be sitting politely before you bend down and give him your attention and your affection. Um, and that'll really solidify the behavior that he has. Good boy. So um, another one of his manners are doorway manners. I mentioned gates and doorways. So he's never allowed to just push through a doorway or a gate. And this is also important with large breed dogs. It can be a dangerous habit. You know, it's very motivating to get outside and to, and to go through a doorway. And a lot of dogs just kind of bust through. And they can knock down kids and stuff. So have them wait for you and just wait for that verbal release. Stay.
came through. He waited for that verbal release. He came through, um, and then he, he went ahead and sat for a greeting and waited for what I was going to tell him to do next. Um, so that pretty much covers it for manners. Just a little side note, something that we've been doing and that we really encourage you to continue to do is while they're eating, right in the middle of having his face down in his food bowl, we reach down and drop a little treat in his bowl and take the food away and have him do another sit stay and give it back. And we kind of make a point to get our hands in his dish while he's eating. Um, what that does is it prevents protective aggression and resource guarding, um, which can be natural for, for all dogs. They just feel like they need to protect their resources. Um, and most people don't have a reason to have their hand in their dog's food bowl while they're eating. And so they can be really surprised when a, when a child or baby or somebody crawls up to the food bowl and they get growled at or snapped at. So that's a good thing to keep up with, just as a preventative measure. Um, I think that pretty much covers it for manners. So we're going to go ahead and continue on to obedience commands. So we're going to show you nine commands. Come, sit, stay, down, down, stay, crate, drop it, watch me, and go to bed.
the first time every time just because it's just what we do. So it's an investment of your time for this first year, it really is. But it's going to pay big dividends over his lifetime. So make sure you continue with that. Because in contrast, what I found is if you're not consistent at rewarding him for obedience, or if you're very predictable about when you are and are not going to reward him, um, they do develop that on and off switch. They learn to think about it every single time. Is it going to be worth it this time, or is it not going to be worth it? Um, so, you know, put things around your house. Pouch the house. Stock your pockets is what I tell people to do. Put little baggies of treats or, you know, bones or toys or things that are very motivating to him so that they're convenient and so they're out where you can see them. So you remember, you know, you go to get something out of the fridge and you remember, ask him to do a sit-stay or ask him to do something like that. Um, and then when you go out for a walk, have something in your pockets to make it worthwhile to him. So, um, anyway, continuing on with the obedience commands. We've done come, sit, stay, and then I'll show you the third hand signal that he's learned. And that's a down. Let's get you off your bed. Come! Come! Good boy. So with a, oops, with a down, I always start in a sit. And then I put my hand flat and take it down to the ground. I've got little treats tucked in here. Down. back out and 
take a, or turn all the way around and take a treat from your hand um, for the down stay. Otherwise, they kind of learn to go in and then back out really fast. So a lot of time and a lot of care has been put into getting him used to his crate and enjoying being in his crate. And the reason for that is the crate is going to be one of your most handy tools for him. It just saves you a whole lot of dog drama. It saves you destruction, house training problems, um, all kinds of things. It's just kind of a no-brainer, you know, if you need them out from underfoot, if you need them, um, if you need to go out of the house for an hour or two, if you need to, whatever, you just put them in this crate. Um, and we do give them something to do while he's in there. We give him a bone to chew, we give him um, a bully stick or another bone or something so that he enjoys being in there. So make sure you make good use of that. Um, he's been taught to sleep quietly in his crate for up to three hours during the day and for up to eight full hours in the night without needing a potty break. Um, having said that, when he first goes home and while he's acclimating, because of the stress and everything that's going on and all the changes, it's very common um, for puppies to get diarrhea while they first get home. And so if he cries and asks to be let out those first couple days in the middle of the night, kind of out of nowhere, go ahead and give him that potty break. He just might need it. Um, but he's done really, really well in the crate. He enjoys his crate. Um, and he sleeps quietly when we put him in there. And just like with the doors and the gates and everything else, ask him to wait for your verbal release before you let him out. Stay. Just a note on the crate, 
some people struggle with, with keeping their dog in the crate, and it doesn't feel natural to us. And we as humans... claustrophobic instinct. So we feel very uncomfortable in tight spaces, but dogs are the complete opposite. Um, they have a natural denning instinct, which means they feel very safe and very secure in tight, enclosed spaces. Um, so make good use of that, and, and don't feel you know uncomfortable about locking him in his crate for a couple of hours at a time. It's okay. It's very natural for him. Also, dogs sleep, and puppies especially, uh, up to 14 to 16 hours a day. So they spend a lot of time sleeping. It's very natural for them to be sleeping in their crate. Um, and, it, and it, you know, does give them a, a degree of comfort and security. So a good rule that I have, especially with families with children, is if the dog goes into his crate on his own, that he's off limits until he comes out again. That's kind of his personal downtime. You know, we ask him to respect our space, and in return, that's how we respect his space. Um, so that pretty much covers the obedience commands. We're going to touch on the leash training for a minute. We've spent a lot of time walking on the leash, and there's basically two types of walks that we do. There's a short leash walk, um, <clears throat> like a four or five foot leash like this when we need to get from point A to point B. And then there's a, a kind of a pleasure walk when we take them either off leash or on a long leash, like a 10 or 15 foot leash. Um, and I really recommend that you specify, you have a very specific leash for, for which type of walk that you do because you have very different expectations from him based on what kind of a walk you're doing. And if you always use the same leash for the same type of walk, then that gives them a heads up on what to expect from you and what's going to be expected from him. So if he's on a short leash like this, um, I don't specify, unless he's healing, and I'll talk about healing in a second, I don't specify which side I want him on, left or right. Um, I just want him to be on a slack leash. I want him to maintain this J shape in the leash, and I want him to be responsive to my verbal commands. And then I also ask him to sit whenever I stop. And so they kind of learn to automatically sit when I stop. Um, and I want them to change directions when I change directions and kind of be paying attention to me. Um, if they stop and try to sniff and check things out on the way, I don't let them. I just keep on moving because um, that's the expectation on a short leash walk that, that we're moving and, and it's business and he needs to stay with me. So, um, there's, so there's two commands associated with a short leash walk and that's let's go when you want him to go, and then if he pulls, I stop and I say easy. And it's really important that you completely stop and get his attention and get him back to you before you continue on. Um, because I see it all the time, I see people kind of pulling and saying easy, easy, easy when their dog's pulling ahead, but all that's doing is teaching them to continue to pull. Because uh, dogs have a natural reflex on their chest and their neck that makes them want to pull against something. So if they feel pressure, their natural instinct is to push against it. Um, so getting somewhere is the motivation for him. You can't let him continue on until he's paying attention to you. Another thing we also do when we're on a short leash walk like this, it's called attention walking, is I reward him every time he looks at me. And it gets to the point that they kind of walk looking up at you like that. Um, and it's because you want yourself to be the most engaging, entertaining thing for him and the most rewarding thing for him while you're out on a short leash walk. Otherwise, he's going to get so stimulated on going out on a leash that he's going to be wanting to you know, sniff the birds and chase the leaves and doing whatever else. And it's going to be a constant battle getting him to stay on a loose leash. You just want him to pay attention to you and walk with you. So if I can get him to wake up here, he's ready for his afternoon nap. absolutely glued to you. And I do use a lot of food and luring with heel 
Um, and I recommend that you do that, you know, through the first year until he's really solid on his heel. But this is to get you past very intense distractions, like if there's another dog or there's something over here. I always do it on my left side. I want him on my left side, but I place myself between the dog and the distraction so that he's looking at me. And sit. I start him out in a sit, and I just do very short spurts. I heel for a couple of feet at a time, a couple steps at a time, and then I ask for another sit. Heel. He's preoccupied with, with the camera here. Um, but when you take him, when he rings the bell, come on, get outside. Take him on a leash to a very specific area in your yard, and that will kind of become his toilet area. And go ahead and leave his excrement there for a couple of days and let, it, let the area become really saturated with the scent. Um, because when he comes out here again and he smells that, it's going to stimulate him to go. Get outside. something over there he really wants. But it's important that you don't let him play. Okay, good boy. Get outside. Get outside. Okay, let's go. So you don't let him play or sniff or find a bone or whatever when he goes outside. Otherwise, he's just going to learn to ring the bell to go out and do those other things.
And on that note, he knows where the bell is at our house. He's going to need to relearn where the bell is at your house. And the way to do that, we've included a bell in your packet, so there will be one sent home with you. But go ahead and hang it on the door um, that you're going to use most often to take him out to go to the bathroom. Um, and when he's not looking, rub something yummy on there so he doesn't just go and lick it right off. And you want to do it when he's not looking so that he's got to find it on his own. Because as a general rule of thumb, the more proactive a dog has to be and the more he has to use his own thought processes to figure something out, the more uh, solidified it is when he finally learns it. Um, so if he has to figure that out on his own, sniff out the bell on his own and go find it, when he initially touches it, he's probably not going to actually be ringing the bell. He'll probably just be you know, touching the peanut butter or, or whatever it is that he sniffed out. But he's going to look for your reaction. And so be prepared for that for the first couple times, you know. Um, say, good outside, you want to go outside and give him a reward, give him a treat, a hook on the leash, take it out to the potty spot, and then he'll be able to transition that and know that it means the same thing at your house that it means here. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for Carrie. He's done really, really well. We've really enjoyed him. Um, as you can see, the hair is still kind of growing back in on his, on his little foot and his leg where he had his cast. It was all the way up to here. It came down, but the doctor said his toe healed beautifully. And it's coming along really nicely. So anyway, we think you're going to love him. He's got a great personality and been a lot of fun.